Welcome, I am Stephen Mazza. I'm the Interim Dean of the KU Law School. We're going to have a lot to talk about uh, over the next several days, but before we begin with that, take a moment to appreciate the fact that your days of worrying about your LSAT score, um, filling out those online applications, writing those why am I so wonderful essays, all of that is now behind you. Uh, you've arrived and we are delighted uh, that you chose to join us. It's been close to 20 years uh, since I sat where you do now, uh, poised to take my own steps towards the legal profession. I remember very little about my first day of law school uh, other than being nervous and being a little intimidated. Um, I don't remember who the dean was, much less anything the dean may have said to me that morning. <laughs> now, regardless of whether you remember anything that I or anyone else says to you today, I know you'll remember this day. Because today you embark on what is going to be the most interesting and challenging years of your professional life. Let me tell you a little bit of, uh, about your class. Counting your summer starter colleagues, you are 162 strong selected from over 1,100 applications. You come to us from some 73 colleges and universities in 21 states and several foreign countries. 104 of you are Kansans and you represent 23 different counties within the state of Kansas. The range in age from youngest to oldest is 21 years. 24 is your median age. 16 of you already have graduate degrees. Your undergraduate majors include business, history, political science, journalism, urban studies, biology, anthropology, chemical engineering, construction engineering, mechanical engineering, nursing, uh, and a bunch more. You are a well-traveled group. Uh, you have lived, worked, and studied in places such as Italy, Egypt, Spain, Austria, Nicaragua, Germany, Indonesia, England, Greece, Canada, not finished, Argentina, the Netherlands, Taiwan, Turkey, Nigeria, Korea, still not finished, Belgium, China, Mexico, Ireland, Thailand, and Ethiopia, and I think I'm leaving out a few. Given that level of international experience, it's not surprising that several of you are multilingual. We have amongst us professional musicians, several actors, a number of collegiate athletes, some marathon runners, a couple of former high school coaches, several volunteer coaches, and a number of teachers. We have with us today, ladies and gentlemen, the founder of the local Bleeding Kansas Dodgeball League. <laughs> Who wants to own up to that? Ah, there he is. <laughs> One of you voluntarily disclosed that you were a member of the K-State Cadaver Dissection Team. I didn't know they had teams. <laughs> One of you was a staff writer for the Vanderbilt Hustler newspaper. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> On a more serious note, you have in many ways already shown a commitment to public service and to helping others by volunteering with organizations like the Special Olympics, Advocates Against Sexual Violence, the United Way, the Adopt-a-School Program, the Red Cross, Salvation Army, Habitat for Humanity, the Kansas Humane Society, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and Amnesty International. You have served your country through military service, and we are incredibly grateful for that. Many of you have been active in politics. Some of you are the progeny of generations of lawyers, while others of you are the first in your family to study law. And while both groups have a lot to be proud of, None of that really matters at this point because the lawyer that you become will be a function of what you make of yourself here in law school. And of course, every single one of you have exhibited two traits that will be essential to your future success in law school, good judgment in seeking admission to KU Law and hard work in amassing the kind of record that 
uh, led to your acceptance. Well, about now you might be saying to yourself, what have I gotten myself into? What is the study of law? Well, Thomas Jefferson gave this advice to law students. Make all knowledge your province, read the natural sciences, history, criticism, rhetoric, and oratory, and read from dawn until bedtime. <laughs> well, let me turn first to Jefferson's advice to read broadly. The, the late Chief Justice Rehnquist described the modern day law school curriculum as an intellectual feast. We've spent a lot of time preparing the feast for you and we want you to partake of it. But bear in mind, and you've probably heard this already, spoon feeding the material is not what we are about in law school. At the end of the semester we give you an opportunity to provide feedback on your professor's performance, and in the past, without fail, uh, some students will write things like, I had to teach my myself contracts, I had to teach myself torts. Now, the student probably intended that statement to be a criticism of the professor, but we don't view it that way. Uh, forcing you to distill from the, from the class discussion what the rule of law is, and how that rule of law is going to apply to a different set of facts, that's what we're training you to do. And the fact of the matter is, when you become a lawyer, lawyers don't get easy questions. The questions that you're going to be confronted with are messy, they're complicated, uh, they're difficult to address, and an ability to teach yourself the law uh, is going to be incredibly important. We're not a trade school. Our ambitions for you extend beyond just learning the material necessary to pass the bar exam, although we certainly expect you uh, to do that. As you'll come to appreciate over the next few weeks, the work of a lawyer requires an ability to analyze and assess problems. F. Scott Fitzgerald said, the test of a first-rate intellect is the power to hold two opposing ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. Now, we believe strongly in this notion of opposing ideas. Every day in class, you're going to grapple with questions that, more often than not, don't have a single right answer. So we're going to test your ability to think, to criticize, to question, and, and honestly, we have relatively little interest in your ability to just regurgitate facts and regurgitate material. Now, this brings me to the second part of Jefferson's advice to the law student, and that is to read from dawn until bedtime. The late Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes said, law students must shun delights and live laborious days because in law, even genius must labor. Now, there is some truth uh, to that statement. Uh, law is not like music or math. Uh, we do not have child prodigies uh, when it comes to law. Uh, great legal minds are made through hard work and study. They're not born. But having said that, be careful not to lose yourself in this process of legal education. Take care of yourself, take care of those who are around you, get some exercise, have some fun, take advantage of one of the best college towns in the country, get involved in student organizations, you're going to be a better person, and you're going to be a better law student if you do that. And then finally, I would be remiss in my duty to you if I didn't acknowledge the fact that you're entering the legal profession at a time when it is beleaguered. You know, lawyers have always had to contend with a bunch of bad jokes and unfavorable depictions on television and in the <coughs> movies, but unfortunately, some actual behavior by real lawyers in the recent past uh, has been particularly disheartening. For example, a lawyer gave the incredibly short-sighted advice that torture of suspected terrorists was permissible. And the fallout from that advice is something that we are still grappling with. Now, I raise that not to make a political point. Uh, I have relatively little interest in politics. But to illustrate for you the sort of power and responsibility 
you will possess as a lawyer. And as corny as this may sound, lawyers are the guardians of the rule of law in this country. When former Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall used his legal skills to successfully argue the case of Brown versus the Topeka, Kansas Board of Education, he changed not just the life of that young African-American girl, he changed societal norms in this country. And when you become a member of the legal profession, you are also going to have that power. Now, admittedly, not all of us wield that power uh, in as far-reaching a manner as Justice Marshall, but every day lawyers make differences in the lives of their clients and in their communities. So when you protect a family from being evicted, wrongfully evicted from their home, you have changed that family's life. When you help a small business owner defend against a lawsuit that could wipe out all the work that that small, small business owner has done up to that point, you affect that person's life. When you help somebody adopt children, you have changed lives for that family. So I ask that you commit yourself to this important endeavor. It's not easy. I'll tell you that up front. But if you put forth the effort, the next three years are going to be the most fulfilling and rewarding of your life.